with authority. I feel like that's my Marv Albert impersonation. <laughs> with authority. Yeah, that's the best he got. I his, him, I'm like, yo, I'm not messing with his line. That is like classic. With authority. Welcome to a special edition of our With Authority podcast. Larry Veal, Casey Pratt. Welcome to the quarantine edition with our special guest, Eric Paschal of the Golden State Warriors. Casey, say hi to Eric. Hi, Eric. How you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm good. I'm homeschooling my kids all day, and that's not easy, so I'm tired. I'm good otherwise. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Sure that's a little fun, though. That's a little fun. It is fun, man. It is. I don't know if it's just the way you have the camera pointed or you're so tall or whatever it is, but it just looks like like you are in your apartment and there's like, it's just a white background and there's, there's I get the sense there's nobody within miles of you. Yeah, but it's because I have a stool at my like little, uh, little counter. So I'm on the stool right now. It makes me look kind of, kind of tall. So, okay. That's really it. So what are you doing? Why don't we go back a little bit, okay? Uh, because for me, first of all, it's only been a little over a week since the NBA actually shut down. There was that Wednesday night when Rudy Gobert uh, tested positive, and then like in two minutes the league shut down. Yeah. I don't know what it's like for you. For me, it feels like it's been months already. Yeah, it definitely feels that uh, that long. I mean, the way I found out was actually uh, through Donovan Mitchell. So I FaceTimed him, like, I asked him, like, are you good? This is, like, right after the Rudy Gobert thing. And he was like, yeah, I'm fine. Like, I'm, nothing's wrong. He's like, but the league is suspended. I'm like, what? So I'm like, hold on, I'm going to call you back. Next thing you know, I checked Twitter. It says two minutes ago, NBA season suspended. So it was weird for me. I mean, especially in your rookie season, who expects to go through something like this? But it's all part of it. I mean, I'm hoping everything gets solved fast and we're able to play again. Now, Donovan tested positive along with Rudy, right? So have you checked in with him subsequently to see how he's doing? Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, we've called each other multiple times just to see how we're doing. You know, we have all the time in the world now, so <laughs> nothing else to do. I mean, me and him played 2K together. We was on uh, my career, so we were just playing, playing together on the park and just – having fun and playing Call of Duty. I mean, there's nothing else really we can do at this point. So everything we do is just virtual now. Yeah. Now, I know a lot of us are kind of scared with all the news going on, but to be able to talk to him and see that he's doing this well, I would imagine that's very encouraging for you and for all of us, frankly. Uh, yeah. I mean, of course it's encouraging because it's like we can stay healthy while having it. But at the same time, we got to be very cautious because we don't know who we can spread it to. And we still got to take those uh, those precautionary measures in terms of just washing your hands, covering your cough, making sure you wash your hands at least 20 seconds. I mean, all those little things could make a difference. So I feel like, uh, of course, it feels good for us for us to be like, all right, it's not really hurting us that bad, but still knowing that like we can potentially hurt someone else a lot worse. So. So what is a day in the life of Eric Pascal like right now, given that you guys are not even allowed to go to the facility, so you can't go to the gym to get shots up, you can't go to the weight room and lift. Like, what's what's the normal Eric day right now? So I'll probably wake up around 9, 10, because we get to sleep, sleep in now. Uh, I'm not a big breakfast guy, so probably have some fruit in the morning, uh, relax, play some video games, cook lunch. I've, I've become a, a, a pretty decent chef now ever since this whole lockdown thing. Um, cook lunch, go to the, so I try, I try to go to the gym in my apartment uh, complex because we still, it's still open. So okay. sanitize that, go to the gym, come back, cook my dinner and then hop back on the video game, honestly. Who's the best 2K player? I know you're big on 2K, so who do you think is the best online 2K player? And and did you see that your own team has its own 2K squad? Have you ever messed around with them at all? So I've never messed around with the 2K League. Like, I, I feel like they're probably so good at the game <laughs> yeah. now. 
But best line probably Kai. I would say mm, Kai Bowman. Okay. He, he's he's pretty good at 2K. Uh, I would like to say I'm I might be the best Call of Duty player. Maybe I don't know. I might be able to say that. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. I got to see everybody else play. But recently I've been pretty good just because that's all I've been doing. What what would you say you're like? kill to death ratio is and call it i used to play a ton of call of duty i've fallen off lately but you know having two kids and all but i mean how how lethal are you in that game uh so i always have a over a one uh kill to death ratio go. but you gotta have that recently amazing. recently I've, I've probably been like last ever since the whole nba suspend i've probably been like a one five all like right. i've been I've been playing pretty well recently. <laughs> so he's a bad man he right is. now. I want to come back to the cooking thing. Like, if, <laughs> if we were allowed to come over, well, first of all, quarantine or not, you probably wouldn't let us in. But like, like if, if you did, <laughs> you did let us in. Uh, what what can you cook now? You because you kind of dropped that. All right, I, I'm getting to be a pretty good cook. What what are you cooking? Like, you know, we're not playing a lot, so I stay away from the car. So because we're not. We're not the same thing. So I cook seafood. I'm a big seafood guy. I love seafood with like any type of seafood. So I have like a steamer in my house. I steam like lobster tail and uh, Whoa. yeah, shrimp. And then like I cook uh, like broccoli, carrots, asparagus. Uh, I, I buy some steak every once in a while and cook that. And those are my meals. You know, if you're doing uh, well, a lot of seafood, Obviously, the seasoning and the sauces become more important. Do you dive into that, or are you pretty simple on that? Yeah, I pretty. I actually have like a lot of seasonings in my cabinet. It's surprising, and a lot of that has to do with my mom. Like my mom is, has taught me a lot, and being in her household, I see a lot of seasonings and what goes well with certain things. So, um, that I give all that credit to my mom in terms of the seasoning. Give give me your favorite. I mean, like I'm a I'm a, I just go Mrs. Dash. You know, it's got all the stuff pretty mixed in there. I'm I'm, I'm very simple. Well, how about you? What are you going? Uh, to? It depends. Like, I like of course I like like lemon pepper seasoning. Uh, Old Bay is always good on seafood. Garlic powder, onion powder, uh, lard seasoning, salt. All those all those good things. I mean, Italian seasoning. I have, I have it all. <laughs> like I legit have it all. You know what's crazy? If if not for all this quarantining stuff, this is a, a line of questioning we would have never asked you, right? This would never would have come up, ever. That is I would, like I, when I see you, I I'm, I'm not going to be thinking, gee, I wonder what he's cooking for dinner tonight. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the I I wouldn't have cooked if we didn't have this. <laughs> this <whole thing. laughs> right. Man, but yeah, that's, this... that's my little hobby now. Okay, a little, a little cook every once in a while. I was going to say this year was already going to be something that you would remember forever. I know Adam Silver said everybody's kind of fighting the clock in a lot of ways, so he wants to get back to games. But, I mean, this rookie year for you has been spectacular so far. What are, like, your favorite takeaways? Is there a favorite memory or game or, or just anything from this season thus far? Um, I mean, I one thing I'd like to take away from the season is just, like, we were a whole whole bunch of young guys that got an opportunity that a lot of young guys don't really get, and that's the one thing I like about it is just we were able to play in games. Like that's that's very rare for having four rookies, and me, Smiley, Jordan, Kai. So it's like we got a lot of opportunity this season. Uh, obviously, big it's a big season because a lot of roster moves. Rookie year, you don't really expect that, so. I mean, it was weird, but, I mean, probably my favorite memory of the season was probably my birthday game, obviously, because I played pretty well, uh, and we got a win against Portland, so I feel like that was probably my favorite memory. Now, I know these guys haven't been on the floor much, but they've been around, so, like, what is one takeaway or one thing you've learned from Steph and one thing maybe you've learned from Clay? Because I know they're two very different people. Um... Honestly, I've probably learned the same thing from both of them. Okay. And in terms of just saying, just go out and play. Like, don't don't worry about making mistakes. Uh, go play how you want to play. And, they, of course, they pull us aside and teach us, like, oh, you got to do this in this situation and screen here and 
So all those little things, uh, I feel like Clay and Steph have done a great job. And just seeing them cheer on the sideline is a very big thing. I mean, two superstars like that, and they're cheering for you. They're running up and down the sideline, yelling. I mean, that's great, and it shows uh, how great their leadership is. I don't know how much you've had a chance to observe their individual workouts, but both of them are just tireless. I mean, was, was that yeah. surprising to you coming from the college? First of all, in college, you're limited the number of hours you can do stuff uh, because of NCAA rules. But those guys, and part of the reason they are as great as they are is because they put in the work. And, and maybe you can contrast and compare the difference from college to the NBA in, in terms of what you have to do to excel. Um, I would say the big difference for college and NBA, of course, is just like, you're, you don't have to, like, coaches don't make you work out for, like, an hour. So, like, in college, like, they'll make you work out for, like, an hour, hour and a half. Like, in the NBA, you could work out for 30 minutes really, 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 really hard, and that could be, like, your day or, like, your start to the day. And that was one thing I really like is just, like, it's a lot about detail in the NBA. And while in college, they just want to get the work in because we kind of have a time slot. So, like, you have to... Even with individual workouts, like you have, you try to get as much done in this time without tiring you out. But in the NBA, they could tire you out in 30 minutes, and that could be your workout. But with Steph and Clay, I mean, they they're workout machines. I mean, watching them work out is like a like a show. Like I've seen Steph work out so many times, and it's just like I like I catch myself just watching him work out. He goes game speed every rep, and, and like barely ever misses. So it, and then Clay, of course, just coming back, just watching him shoot. It's it's a pretty pretty cool sight because they those two barely ever miss. Now I know there's a sense with this team where, you know, maybe the record obviously isn't where you want it to be, but no one seems to be very discouraged about that because you know next year these guys are coming back. So I mean, what kind of mentality have you had in this year, and like what kind of stuff of Steve Kerr and the coaches imparted upon you? Because I think the future going to be very bright for you and the team um probably this year our mentality has just been like go out there let's have fun i mean nothing nothing else we could really do besides just go out there take advantage of an opportunity that that's not given a lot and uh just go have fun i mean I, the game of basketball should be fun and i know it's a lot more fun when you're winning but just getting, I feel like for a young group and in terms of Coach Kerr, just like developing all the young guys and getting them game reps and seeing what they can do and putting them in different positions. And uh, I feel like our team has done, done a good job of that, just going out there, having fun, trusting each other and just knowing that, all right, we're going to keep getting better. I mean, that was our one thing, just like getting better every day, getting better every game. So I feel like Coach Kerr has done a great job of just continuing to let us have fun and still coaching us and still just being able to have a positive attitude throughout the whole season. A better coach, Steve Kerr or Jay Wright? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just That's messing that stuff. I just... Both, both great coaches. Both great coaches. And uh, very different, but very same. I mean, Coach Wright <laughs> isn't as laid back as Coach Kerr. Because Coach Wright is very intense, like very, 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 very intense. And I get in college, it means a lot because it's just like you only get 40 games. Like, no, you get 32 max, 40 if you make the championship. So every little game really matters. And I'm not saying in the NBA it doesn't, but there's a lot more opportunity in the NBA yeah. in terms of just 82 games. So... That's the one thing that I would say. But Coach Kerr is a very good coach. Coach Wright is a very good coach. No, I was just messing with you just to see what your response is going <laughs> to be. I'll give you an explanation. Yeah. No. <laughs> um, so you were, were the 41st pick in the draft. And I, I, I've got a guy on Twitter that's always uh, hitting me up because he's a huge Villanova fan. And he, before you even got here, we were saying, that was a steal. That was a steal. And so I, I was paying more attention probably to you uh, of the, the rookie class, and you were dunking on dudes all the time. Did you expect to be able to come in and have this level of success so fast? Um, 
Yes and no. I mean, obviously, like you have to earn what what is given to you. So I, I feel like I've earned a lot of things this year. But at the same time, uh, I, what I always say is just bet on yourself. I mean, you, if you're confident enough in yourself and know you know what you're capable of, you should be able to. I mean, flourish. So that's the one thing. Like I try, I stay confident at all times, and uh, so it is a surprise because like I got an opportunity that a lot of people don't get, but I feel like at the same time, uh, it's not because I know what I'm capable of. Yeah. Do you find it frustrating at all? Like, I think it, it's so stupid that you get penalized if you stay four years in college and play for a fantastic program and a school that's winning national championships. Like, that's a bad thing that you stayed four years because you didn't come out as some you know, skinny teenage kid that needs three years to figure out the league. To me, it's the, the mindset is just totally baffling. Yeah, I mean, it is. That's what happens. But you just got to take it and run with it. And obviously, I didn't expect to get picked 41st. Uh, but, I mean, I got the opportunity. The Warriors believed in me and gave me a three-year guaranteed contract. So, obviously, they believed in me. They saw something in me. But... I, the older thing, I don't, I don't understand it because I feel like I'm more ready than a lot of other players just because I'm 23. I've been in school for five years because I transferred sat out a year, and like, I feel like maturity is a big thing in the NBA. Even like off the court, just knowing how to handle things and uh, being mentally ready, and that was the one thing I felt like I had to my advantage. But I mean, like I said, I mean. Anything can happen. Everything happens for a reason as well. So I just try to take advantage of the opportunity. Now, how do you feel like, have you talked to any of your former teammates at Villanova? I know there's guys in college basketball that are now missing out on March Madness, you know, high school basketball players, et cetera, whose seasons are cut short. Hopefully that does not yeah. happen in the NBA. But uh, what have you shared with some of your, your former teammates and friends? Uh that has just been a wild year. I mean, it's, it's been a wild rookie year, but uh, of course, my my guys at Villanova are very, very upset just because a very good team this year finished at AP top ten. So I feel like they had a real good chance to make a deep run in the tournament. And I know for the pre-draft, it's going to be weird because like we don't know what's going to happen. But I mean, I feel like the season, everything's going to be ended up solved out and. It's going to end up being run fluidly. It's just at a different time. Yeah, I know Adam Silver the other day, too, said that he would consider maybe bringing a group of people in that would obviously have to be checked and tested and quarantined in a basic gym area and maybe playing one just big game to uplift everybody in America. What, what would you think of this, an option like that? I think it would be a great idea. Yeah. I mean, because everybody's, like, me too. I just miss sports. Like, yes. there, especially during the basketball season, and like everything's going on. So, like, I feel like NFL free agency has kept me a little, a little uh, better in terms of my spirit. But like, everybody misses sports, and it's just it's a rough time because that's something that we always look forward to every year, no matter what season it is. We watch sports somehow, and just everything's suspended. So it's weird. It's a weird, weird time. Really weird time. But your video game is off the charts now. Your skills are, are video, mad. Yeah, is off the charts right now for sure. Yeah. So I was I was looking at your bio, and it said you were dunking at age twelve. Twelve? Yeah. Oh yeah. man. So come on, so man. It, it goes back to me and Donovan. So we were we were in New York when the summer tournament, uh, at a park named Crack is Whack, and like we're warming up, and like. Donovan goes up and dunks it. So you're like, you see your friend dunk, you're like, all right, like I have to now because I was right after him. So then he dunks it, and then I dunk it after him, and we're like, whoa, like we just dunked for the first time. And then ever since then, like we just kept trying to dunk and dunk and dunk, and then we ended up dunking at a very young age. How tall were you at age 12? Six, one? Maybe six two, maybe at twelve. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm not sure. I, I, maybe five eleven. I don't. I don't. This really upsets me 
I'm very, <laughs> I'm very upset with my parents yeah. giving me very inferior genetics because at 12 years old just seems like really. Now it wasn't like I was dunking at 20 either. So I mean, whatever. But 12 just seems so young to be dunking. Like I don't even know if LeBron was dunking at 12. I think he was. Probably, but I don't know. Yeah, it just, was. It just seems young. Don't you think it's young? I mean... Oh, no, it is pretty young, but nowadays, like, 12 is kind of, like, old for people to dump it. 12 is the new 17, right? I mean... Yeah, I, like, I, I, on the internet, like, so many things, like, 13-year-olds be doing now, I'm like, what? Like, the generation has changed like that, but it has. Like, it, a lot of, like, 13, 14, like... Kids of windmilling, windmill dunking, and 360 dunking. I'm like, I wish I could have did that at 13. <laughs> Speaking of dunks, uh, this guy over here, Larry, is obsessed with Obi Toppin of Dayton. Have you seen him play at all? New York guy, of course. I gotta, I gotta stay in tune. What do you think of uh, of his game? And he's just begging, just begging for him to uh, end up falling to the Warriors. Wherever they end up picking, maybe they have the number one pick. Yeah, I already told Steve and Bob that I could just, they don't even need to look at all this, these videos and all. I just got it. Just Obi Top. They only need two words. Obi Toppin. That's your pick. You don't even need to look at the rest of these dudes. Uh, Obi, Obi is a very good player. I mean, some of the stuff he does in the game is I can't imagine doing like the between the legs dunk in the game. Like I remember seeing I'm like what? Like, in a college game, but, like, he's so dominant, so skilled, smart player, knows how to play the game the right way. Uh, again, I I like him because he's an older dude, too. I like that because he's he's obviously more mature. I think he's, like, 22. So, I, I like that because he's – when I came out, I was 22. So, he, I, I'm a fan of Obi Toppin for sure. And a New York guy. I want to see everybody from New York do well. Yeah. I just think, you know, the way you guys play – and especially if you look at a small ball center kind of thing with a smaller lineup, and he's 6'9", like 225, can step out and shoot threes. I don't know what else you could ask for. I know, you know, some critics will say, well, defensively, you know, but it, college is different than the NBA. So um, yeah. I, I think he's going to be a really good player, um, and, and we'll see how it shakes out. But do you do – do you – well – Obviously, during the season, you're busy. But do you watch a lot of college hoops, or did you when they were playing? Uh, so I watched a lot of Villanova. I mean, got to watch my guys. So I've watched a lot of their games, like a lot. So I'm. There's a few guys in Villanova. I think they have a chance this year, and uh, I think they'll do pretty well. Let me ask you this: This has been. Obviously, a great, successful rookie season for you so far. But what's, like, the most eye-opening thing you've seen? Either, like, something freakish somebody's done or just something amazing either an opponent or teammate's done. What's something that just kind of, like, blew your mind when you saw it happen in the NBA? Oh, uh, I don't know. That's a tough question. I mean, I've seen a lot of crazy dunks this year from our team, another team, uh, Seen a lot of great players this year. Uh, I would say, for me, I would say Luka Doncic. He's mm. only 20 years old. That's the one thing that kind of blows my mind. It's just like, I'm three years older than Luka Doncic. And it's like, this this dude here is a great player. So I, I would definitely say Luka is like, very surprising. Plays at his own pace. Very good player. So what are you doing mentally in this period where we don't know if the season is going to resume I mean there's hope but at this point like best case scenario would be you guys could finish up sometime in the summer or who knows that they're going to just jump straight into the playoffs which which you guys wouldn't be a part of what what are mm -hmm. you thinking about because like you can't even get real NBA workouts in either uh, just staying optimistic I feel like just knowing that Possibly this season is going to come back. So I would I would just say just keeping a positive mindset about all of it. I mean, I know uh, Adam Silver is trying to do his best job to get it resumed and uh, get everything going again. So, I mean, like I said, I fully trust him in terms. He's been a great commissioner even when I wasn't in, like, just over the years. 
and people talk so highly of him. So I feel like everything's going to get resumed for sure. Now, as an NBA player, you have a platform. So, like, what is your mes- message to the Golden State Warriors fans, the fans of basketball, just anybody in the world that is dealing with this right now and being stuck at home? Uh, first things first, stay away from everybody. Continue the social distancing, wash your hands, but uh, just keep keep your attitude, uh, attitude pro- positive. I mean, I feel like that's the one big part about it is just uh, – as long as you're positive about it, I mean, I know it's a very different time being able to be shut down and not really supposed to go outside and practice social distancing and seeing all the stores closed. But uh, just keep a positive attitude, find new hobbies, and uh, try to keep yourself busy because I know it's rough just staying in the house all day. Yeah, you know, you can go out. You're allowed to go out and get fresh air and do and do that sort of stuff. Uh, yeah, you could, you could run or jog or whatever you wanted to do. So it's not like you have to stay inside um, the whole time. You were part of the of the group of warriors that contributed money to help all of the the staff, like the ushers and security people, and uh, I think it's a million dollars. So yeah. tell me the mindset. Uh, like, how did that come about? Whose idea was that? And uh, you know, it's it's one thing if you're Steph and you're making forty million. You're not making forty million yet, um, so. Um, oh yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> how, how how did that all come about? Um, I mean, uh, we got a text saying like, if you want to donate to the staff of the Chase Center and all that, and me, just being the person I am, I of course wanted to donate because you you build relationships with those people throughout the uh, season, and you know who they are, and you say hi to them every day, and. I feel like that's a big part of your whole community in terms of just an organization, just having those type of people around and build a genuine relationship. So I feel like I've just built relationships and I felt like, all right, I might as well contribute to that too, because obviously they're an important part of our organization. Well, that's really cool. Um, By the way, have you kept in touch with Jordan Poole lately? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. You guys have an anniversary coming up here a little bit. What, national championship? Yeah. Uh, I thought, I didn't know if you were going to remind him of just like uh, April 2nd is the anniversary day where uh, Villanova beat Michigan. Uh, and it was kind of kind of a big deal. I don't know if you, you know, like, hey, Jordan, uh, you, you see what, what day it is on the calendar? You know, I don't you know. <laughs> um. I feel like he's heard enough from me from that, from okay. that day. I feel like he's heard enough because I, we did, all right, so me and Jordan actually did all our pre-draft together because we're part of the same agency. So he's he's definitely heard enough of me saying like, hey, you guys lost in the chip to us. <laughs> so <laughs> he's heard enough of it, but we of course we still joke around about it. So does he get it from both you and Draymond then? Uh... I wouldn't say that. I mean, I, the only thing I hear about it, uh, the Michigan Michigan State yeah. is a little uh, that that's a huge robbery. Like, like Draymond, <laughs> the fact that Jordan uh, sung the Michigan State fight song at our open practice was, was actually pretty. <laughs> like, that's funny that he had to do that. So, that that's brutal, that cool. actually. So, you know, we're gonna wrap things up here, but we really appreciate you're spending time and uh well you got a lot of time actually i mean now, so. i mean we could do this every day almost uh <laughs> not Pretty that much. you yeah <laughs> not that you Pretty want much. to uh, appreciate you guys for having me i mean it's been fun nice to talk to people me <laughs> 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 to <laughs> other humans <laughs> right sometimes we're just like so bored so of course it's, it's nice to talk to people when this whole thing is over what are the chances that we, Casey and I, could come over and be treated to that lobster, uh, seafood, whatever you're cooking I got you up? Guys. I, this is all over and everything's clear. I got you guys. Because we're uh, we will we will come over. Uh, we will. I mean, we will <laughs> we will come over for a free meal. But you know what we'll also do? You know what we'll also do? Um, what? You want to go to the House of Prime Rib? You know you know what the House of Prime Rib's about? Uh, yes, yes, I do. Yes, I do. So. We will hook you up at the House of Prime Rib. If you, anytime you want to go, you just let me know, 
and you're there and they'll put out the full spread and 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 just as a bonus Casey and I won't show up yeah because uh, <laughs> I think you'll probably just it, it'll be better for you if we're not there. We'll just set it up if you're down for, for a little prime rib and they got the big baked potato and the special salad with the dressing. It's And, and you live in the city, so you, you got to go do that. Sounds good. I'll definitely appreciate that. Yeah, yeah sure. shoot me a text. We'll get you in there right away. Thank you so much for joining us, Eric. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank All you right. so much. Take care. Hang tight. Stay, you know, stay strong mentally, and you know, hopefully we'll get through this uh, together. For sure. With authority!